All right, let me ask you a question. What would happen if you lost your job today? How would you pay the bills? How would you pay for your mortgage or your rent? How would you take care of your family? How would you generate any sort of income to take care of living the life that you need to live? Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I have a video where I talk about having multiple streams of income. And having multiple streams of income, like that is definitely a key indicator if you wanna build wealth, but even more so, it's income insurance, it's income protection. Having a secondary source of income allows some flexibility. If you lose your job, you have some income coming in. It might not be the full amount that you have from your day job, but it's something, and it's going to relieve some of the stress, some of the anxiety that you're going to have when you lose that job, if that happens. All right, well, this channel is not about losing your job and not just having a secondary source of income. I mean, we're talking about hacking your wealth. So talking about wealth building, what is the importance of having multiple streams of income? Well, it is not a surprise that if you talk to most millionaires that most of them have multiple sources of income. Now it's been shared that on average, millionaires will have seven streams of income. Now that really hasn't been verified any stretch. Uh, it is funny though, I actually did a video where I talked about my multiple streams of income and how I shared the seven and multiple streams of income that I had. I don't know if that's coincidence or not, but that's what I end up doing. But it is reported that 65% of all millionaires have at least three different sources of income. It's also reported that 45% have four, and it's also reported that 29% have five or greater. So if most millionaires and wealthy people have multiple sources of income, then why don't you? Why aren't you working to have that secondary source of income? Today I wanna share five different sources of income that you can start working on today. So let's find out what these five sources of income are right now. Now. What's going on, y'all? Back to another Wealth Hacker TV. And when I'm talking about multiple streams of income, and if you actually watched that other video that I did, I talked about how I was chasing that secondary source of income, which I mean, that's a good thing to have. But you also have to ask yourself, like, could you actually put energy and focus into your current situation? And maybe that is getting another certification or getting another degree or just finding a way to get a pay raise. And there are some simple things that you can do to make that happen. So if you haven't exhausted those means yet, you know, I would encourage you to do so first but after that when you're trying to find that secondary source of income like that's what I want to share with you right now like what are five different ways that you can do that so so let's look at the number one way right now all right the first thing that you can do and probably the easiest is to diversify your investments most of us are accustomed to having a 401k, you start a job, you sign up for the 401k, like that's great. But do you also have a traditional IRA? Do you also have a Roth IRA? Do you also have investment accounts? Do you have your $1,000 in your emergency fund? Having diversified investments is just to having different buckets to be able to pull from in case something happens. If you have all your money tied up in retirement accounts like your 401ks, like your traditional IRAs, and you need money, yes, you can borrow from it, but like that's not the ideal place to get those funds. Like if you had other investments in ETFs, in stocks, in mutual funds that are in taxable accounts, like that not only do you have access to those, but you could also be getting dividends and interest from those to offset any income that you would lose if you lost your job. In addition to having your stocks, your ETFs, your mutual funds, you can also have alternative investments. One of the ways I talk about is peer-to-peer -peer lending with Lending Club. Now there are other peer-to-peer -peer lenders that you can take advantage of. Lending Club just happens to be the one that I'm a bit partial to. Uh, one of the biggest peer-to-peer -peer lenders right now on the market. So peer-to-peer -peer lending is just another income source, another investment that you can put in there to diversify what you currently have. Not to mention the fact you can look at that as like, this is similar to like a high yield bond. So you're collecting interest from this. And if you're not in a retirement account, this is a secondary income source that you can get by having the peer-to-peer -peer lending. In addition to peer-to-peer -peer lending, I mean, I have to mention crypto, right? I have to mention gold, I have to mention silver, I have to mention some of these hard assets. Now, I'm personally not a big fan of putting all our money in these things, but if you wanna take five or 10% of your portfolio and diversify to utilize some of these investments, then all power to you. Like those are definitely some options that you can look at. So there's one I haven't mentioned yet. You're probably wondering why. Well, if you stay tuned, number five is probably the one that you're thinking of I haven't mentioned yet. But before we get to number five, let's talk about number two. 
All right, the other way that you can generate a secondary source of income is to do some sort of service, offer some sort of service. So this is no different than doing some sort of side hustle. So this could be video editing, this could be graphic design, this could be leading yoga or fitness classes in your local park. This is something that you're doing after work or on the weekends to generate that secondary source of income. If you watched another video where I interviewed my buddy Grant from millennialmoney.com, and he talked about how he had mentored a guy to, uh, to do some dog walking. So this is something he did on the side, uh, generating a good income from dog walking, but then he scaled it and then turns out he was able to make this into a six figure business. Uh, he wasn't the one that was walking the dogs. He's able to build a team uh, and build a business out of this. So these are some of the things that can come out of you know doing this this service offering some sort of side hustle and it's funny i was in our uh, we have like a neighborhood uh, facebook group you know for our community and in that like i saw it was a, i think it was a mom or dad that with their kid was offering a service where they were painting people's mailboxes so like, this was something they were showing I, I love this they were showing their kids in a way that they could offer a service make some extra money and they were just going around repainting people's mailboxes. Like, so these are the things that you can do to have that secondary income source. All right, the third thing that you can do is create some sort of product. And when I talk about product, I'm talking about some sort of digital product or some sort of product that can be sold online. Another good friend of mine, his name is Brian Hanks, and he is a financial planner. And with his financial planning practice, he focused on dentists and helping dentists either acquire or sell their dental practices. And by doing this, by working with all these different dentist clients, like he got a lot of information, a lot of experience doing this. So he ended up creating a book that he now sells on Amazon. His book, How to Buy a Dental Practice, not only is a secondary income source, but also it generates new leads for his business. So he's making money selling more books and he's getting more clients to his main business. I mean, that is a win-win. So another good friend of mine, Steve Chu. So Steve had this dream, this ambition that he wanted to allow his wife to quit her job. But for her to quit her job, like he had to replace $100,000 of income. So he created an e-commerce store that sold handkerchiefs, like I think they're wedding handkerchiefs. You can check it out at bumblebeelens.com. But in the first year of creating this product that they sold on their e-commerce store, like he was able to replace his wife's six-figure job. Not only that, so Steve has been able to grow his online empire, so they still have the Bumblebee Linen store that I'm sure does well more than six figures per year. But on his blog, mywifecreatorjob.com, he's created courses and other digital products, now even has a conference that now it's a seven figure business on its own that he did creating this one product that they sold on their e-commerce store. Like, yeah, that's awesome. So another good friend of mine, which you're gonna meet in another video. So his name is Chris Greenwood. Chris Greenwood is the band Manifest. You know, he's had a, an amazing music career, but not only that, uh, you know, he, he, he loves playing music, like he loves, taking the stage, but you know, having a young family and just wanting to grow that family, he wanted to find a way to spend more time, you know, with his wife and his kids. So he started thinking like, how, how can I market myself? Like, how can I increase my sales? Like, how can I increase my income sources? So what Chris did was he created a product that initially showed other musicians like how to market their records, like how could they get more album sales? How could they sell more songs? You know, how could they use basically social media, online marketing to generate all this? So that was a course that he created. Now he's got a membership platform. I mean, he's he's created multiple products, but just creating that initial product is what allowed him to have that secondary income source. Like he still plays shows and he loves it, but he's not required to do so. Like, I mean, he does, he plays the shows that he wants to do, not the ones that he has to do. And that's a huge difference. All right, number four is to start some sort of passion project. Now, the one thing I have experience with this on was, maybe you don't know this yet, but uh, we have four children, our youngest daughter, uh, she's adopted, we adopted from the Philippines, and she's just been an amazing fit for our family. So in that process, so a lot of times when people are adopting, uh, they'll do some sort of fundraiser, usually like a t-shirt fundraiser to help out with the cost. Now, in our situation, like we didn't need those funds uh, to, to, for the adoption costs, but when we had a chance to visit the orphanage where we adopted her from, uh, I mean, this place needed money. So we created a t-shirt fundraiser to raise money for the orphanage. 
and I don't remember actually how much it was, but I think it was between like 15 or 16,000 that we raised, we matched it. I mean, it's almost like $30,000 that we were able to raise for this orphanage just by selling t-shirts. I mean, what an amazing cause like we were able to do there. Um, so like these are some of the things that, that you can do. Uh, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you may notice that uh, I wear these bracelets. Um, now these are Compete Everyday bracelets. My shout out to my buddy Jake Thompson. Uh, I love the Compete Everyday message, but one bracelet I want to talk about that you probably remember were the Lance Armstrong, the Live Strong bracelets. Now these were like an amazing hit. You know, these were those yellow bracelets that everybody was wearing. And it was reported that they sold over 80 million bracelets. Now these things cost like a dollar a piece. So $80 million that uh, through a passion project, they're able to raise for cancer research just by selling these bracelets that cost a dollar. I mean, that is just an, one way that you can raise money through a cause, you know, through uh, just through uh, something that you're passionate about that you want to help out other people, whatever that, that cause or mission is. All right, one company I want to highlight that does this well, and I know there are several out there, but one company is Bombas Socks. And if I'm mispronouncing that, my bad. But the founders of Bombas Socks, so they became aware that one of the most requested items that homeless shelters need, you know, for their people are socks. Like there is just, there is not enough supply uh, for the demand that homeless people need from socks. So this was something that they just rallied around. So they came up with you know, a mission statement and, and a business model to where, so every single pair of sock that they would sell, they would donate a pair to a homeless shelter. So one pair sold, one pair donated. And if you go to the website, like last time I checked, they're reaching over 10 million pairs of socks that they have donated to homeless shelters. Um, 10 million, 10 million pairs. And this is a business that is profitable. So not only is it going towards a good cause, but they're also making money in the process. And these are just a few examples of things that you can do that are passion projects. So whether it be dog shelters, women's shelters, you know, cancer awareness, I mean, any type of thing that you can do, if you are passionate about it, there is a way that you can help people and also make money in the process. All right, the fifth and final way, and I alluded to this, like why didn't I mention this number one when I talk about diversifying your investments? Because I, I feel like number five needed to have its own number. So number five is investing into real estate. Now, so I have other videos, and one in particular I talk about how I failed at real estate, and it was something that I tried, I dabbled in, didn't quite work out the way that I had hoped. Uh, doesn't mean that I'm totally done with real estate, because obviously you can make money in real estate. And then I got a chance to interview a good buddy of mine, Travis. Travis takes me around Nashville to show me his rental properties and how he's cash flow positive and how he's able to make money uh, from his real estate investments and how the property that he's working on right now, I mean, if he wanted, he could net between $100,000 to $200,000 after a year's worth of work of rehabbing this property. So there is definitely money to be made in real estate. So maybe you just start off with a rental property, you start small. Now for those of you that don't want to get into managing properties, like there are still options. And I have another video where I talk about eight different ways that you can invest into real estate without having to manage properties. In that video, I talk about investing into REITs and ETFs and other real estate type investments, real estate notes. Uh, another platform that I talk about is Fundrise. So Fundrise is a, a newer type company and you're seeing more of these similar to peer-to-peer -peer lending. So this is crowdfunding real estate investment options. And with Fundrise, there are competitors like Realty Shares and Rich Uncles, and there's more and more popping up. Like this is definitely a niche that is becoming a lot more popular because real estate is such an attractive investment and a great way to diversify your income sources. Now, if you wanna check out any of those videos, I've got links to those. You can check out my Fundrise review video and I'll have other review videos coming here soon. But there's no question that investing into real estate is a surefire way to generate a secondary source of income. All right, so there are your five different ways that you can generate a secondary source of income. A lot of these five, I mean, you can start doing this today. You might not be able to start uh, diversifying your investments like immediately, um, as far as like maybe a significant amount, but you can still start doing like 25 or 50 bucks a month. The whole key in this really is just getting started. You know, Fundrise, you can get started with 500 bucks. With Betterment or any of these online investment platforms that you can get started like doing 25 bucks a month. Like there are no minimums. You have apps like Robinhood uh, that you can start with little next to nothing. You have other apps like Acorns and 
uh, others that you can start like with your spare change. So I just don't want to hear the excuse that you can't diversify your income source because you can do it. It's just a matter of doing it. So no more excuses. And you know what? Wealth hackers, we don't make excuses. We just do. We do. Uh, we learn by doing. We don't learn by talking about it. We don't learn about reading books. Uh, you learn by taking action. And that's what wealth hacking is all about. All right. So if you enjoyed this video, why don't you do me a favor? Give me a like. If you've not subscribed yet, um, what? What? You really? You haven't? Go ahead and just take care of that now. But most importantly, if you've got somebody that needs to hear this, that they need to generate a secondary income source, and they don't know how, or they don't know how to get started, then why don't you do us and them a favor and share this video with them. All right, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you can make it awesome. Until next time, peace.